Well, good morning, church. If you would, please open your Bibles and me in the book of Acts this morning, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, as we conclude a series that we started six weeks ago called Forward 365. Now, there are several things that we're excited about in heading to 2021, and I'm so excited today to talk to you about a dynamic digital ministry. In the Lord, in a sense of humor, he gives us one of the coldest Sundays in the history of our state to talk to you about the opportunity to reach tens of thousands of people digitally with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful for our digital teams who have been able to kind of subverse with four by four trucks and you know just dog sleds to get here to be able to, to record this message and to get the gospel out. I'm just so grateful for our church to have a heart that says, you know what, if people won't come to First Baptist Broken Arrow to hear Jesus, then we'll go to them. And so I'm so grateful for all God is doing in and through our church and to talk to you today about what does it look like to have a digital ministry that reaches Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. What does it look like to take the gospel? digitally to BA and beyond. I also want to say happy Valentine's Day. Uh, guys, it's, it's not too late. It may be a little hard on one of the coldest Sundays in the history of our state to get DoorDash to come today, but hey, it's happy Valentine's. It's a wonderful day to celebrate the love of Jesus Christ. And I'm excited today to talk about one of the things in which we're going to accomplish the mission of our church. You are a witness for Jesus. The Holy Spirit has empowered you to be a witness for Jesus, which means your life counts, which means everything we do matters. And so when we begin to talk about fulfilling the mission of God, we must remind ourselves we're not here for the mission of self, but we're here for the mission of God. FBCBA exists to reach BA and beyond by multiplying disciples to follow Jesus. We want to make disciples that make disciples that make disciples that follow Jesus. Jesus, we want to take the gospel here in Broken Arrow, and we want to impact not only the city of Tulsa, not only the metro area, but the entire state of Oklahoma, the world by God's grace. Now, we find that the same pioneer spirit was evident when Jesus came to his disciples and began began to commission them. In fact, when we find the book of Acts, we find that the book of Acts was written by Luke the historian, right around AD 63. Now the Gospel of Luke tells us what Jesus did. Acts tells us what Jesus' followers should do. Acts gives us the most comprehensive history of the early church. It's a, actually a very weighty book. It is 28 chapters, 1,003 verses. You may be two Chick-fil-A biscuits to kind of get through the book of Acts. But Acts is one of the longest books in the Bible and covers a span of right at 30 years of history, beginning with the start of the church all the way to the imprisonment of Paul. But really, the theme of Acts is set in the first 11 verses. In Acts 1, 1 through 11, Luke gives us the essentials of life as he mentions Jesus in every single verse in the first 11 verses. And church, I can't think of a better time than today, than you right now, where God has placed you in 2021, to remind yourself that you are a witness for Jesus. Since 1620, when the pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock, we have never been closer to being more like the Christians in the book of Acts in our country than right now. And the risen Jesus, before he ascends to heaven, commissions and gives his church our mandate, our purpose, and our orders. You are a witness for Jesus. With that in mind, why don't we study in depthly this morning, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And your Bible says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Jesus says you will receive power, that the moment you surrender your life to him, the moment you say, Jesus is Lord, he is king of my life, you will receive power, Jesus says. Now this word here, dynamis, it can be translated dominating power, divine enablement. It's mentioned in the book of Acts 10 separate times, and it's significant. God wants to do a significant work in your life. In fact, historically in the Old Testament, being empowered by the Holy Spirit was an extraordinary act. It was seen in the lives of Gideon and Zechariah and Elijah. Furthermore, the Spirit empowered kings and priests and judges to do a specific task for God. This word dynamis, 
is used 118 times in the New Testament, overwhelmingly describing the power of Jesus Christ himself in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Jesus says, the same power that God through the Holy Spirit gave him in his ministry, he gives us to fulfill his ministry in our lives. Jesus in the Gospel of Luke gives eternal life. Jesus in the book of Acts gives us his astounding power. Jesus's power is essential for your life. Jesus's power is a supernatural enablement, an empowerment that he does within us, and we need his power. Now think about this. Now you can have the fastest car in Tulsa, but if you have no power, you're not going anywhere. And you can have the best and biggest house, but if you don't have power, it's never going to reach its full potential. You can have the coolest phone or iPad or gadget, but no power, no success in seeing whatever it is that device has been given it to maximize its potential. We need his power in like manner. We can have preaching and incredible music and resources and facilities, but we need God's power. Church, may we never think for a second that we can fulfill his mission without his power. Jesus's power is the means he uses to expand his work in us and his witness through us. The need of the hour is always his power. Now, where and how do we get Jesus's power? Look back at verse eight. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, Jesus says. Acts has been called the gospel of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit passionately desires the entire world for Christ and equips and empowers Christ's disciples to fulfill his mission in their life. By how? By being a witness, Jesus says. Now notice the Holy Spirit comes and not to make us feel spiritual or, or just to give enlightenment, but empowerment. Jesus empowers you to be a witness for him. Jesus says, whatever it is I'm calling you to do, whatever it is in 2021 that I'm wanting you to step out on faith, to live a life that fulfills my mission, I will give you my power. My power that will enable you to be the witness for me. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Now, this word witness here is a fascinating history. It came to be the word martyr because so many people were dying for their testimony. Powerfully, Jesus says, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Notice the early church did not focus on what the world was coming to, but who came into the world. A disciple is a witness. We are always incessantly in pointing people to Jesus Christ. Now, so what is a witness? A witness objectively conveys the facts of a historical event or an experience that they were a part of by their words and by their actions. We are witnesses for Jesus Christ. We are to explain to the world who God is and what he has done and what Jesus is doing in our lives. There is no plan B. We have a mission to tell others about Jesus. Now, can I tell you that God's already given you an appetite to do those things? I mean, think about all the incredible things that you've seen in your life. 
Some of you, you've seen the beauty of the Rockies, or you've seen the, the majesty of, of a beach, or the breathtaking allness of the ocean, or you've been able to see just part of this incredible world. Sun rises in one part of the country, and sun sets in another part of the country. You've been able to see life through the birth of your children, or you've been able to see an incredible moment where just there's no other way to explain this, and you know, God did this. Through YouTube, you've been able to see some of the most crazy, random things ever. There's no way that could happen. Yes, it is. How? Because I saw it with my own eyes. Jesus says we're to have that same passion, that same intentionality to describe who he is, what he has done in our lives, and what he is doing through Jesus. In fact, when you study the book of Acts, the apostles boldly witness to people about the teachings of Jesus, about the life of Jesus, about the death and resurrection of Jesus. They were not formally trained, but they were totally changed. In fact, did you realize of the 40 miracles listed in the book of Acts, 39 of them, church, were outside of a church. God's people were out and amongst culture. They were living life and they were telling all who would listen and who would see that my life has forever been changed by Jesus Christ. We are a supernatural people who have been saved from death to life, who live a life not by sight, but by faith. To live a life centered not on ourselves, but upon Jesus Christ. And every believer in Jesus is a witness for Jesus. One conversation at a time. In fact, can that be our goal for the rest of 2021? That God, I love you and I trust you. And Lord, I want to be a witness for Jesus. One conversation at a time. A witness is being faithful to share what God through Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, has done for us and through us, and can now by faith do for others. A disciple is a witness. As a follower of Jesus, we are a witness for Jesus, one way or the other. The world is either seeing us, or they're seeing Jesus through us. Church, you are a witness for Jesus. You say, well, wait a minute, what what does that look like? I mean, what what is some ways that you and I can show the blessing of God through Jesus Christ? Well, I I want you to take this word bless, and I want to give you five things, five things that as we continue to work out our salvation in 2021, as we continue to live by mission, five things that, you know, if you just did one of these each week, how you can be a witness for Jesus. Take this word bless. One, build relationships. Yeah, just be intentional about building relationships with those around you who God has naturally placed around you. Your, your neighbors, your coworkers, your classmates, your teammates, those, those people sitting right next to you in your cubicle or by your desk or in that locker next to you. God has them there for a reason. Start building a relationship. Hey, you know, tell me about you. Hey, what's, what's going on in your life? You know, what is it that you love? What is it that you struggle with? What is it that you do for fun on Tuesdays or Thursdays? What are you doing this weekend? Build relationships. Be a blessing. Secondly, listen first. You know, demographers tell us that one of the most effective ways to share the gospel isn't just sharing the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but it's also listening, allowing others to share their hearts allowing others to share their highs and their lows of life, allowing others to, to say, you know what, this is what I'm struggling with, or you know, this is where I find joy, and using those as opportunities to point people to Jesus and the gospel. Now, thirdly, eat with someone and talk about Jesus, using the times that we have just once a week, and you know, hanging out in BA and beyond, all throughout Tulsa, and inviting someone to eat some good food. And over that meal, share two things. Here's what Jesus has done in my life, and here's what Jesus is doing in my life. Share those two things and see what God does. You are a witness for Jesus. I think fourthly, it's sharing Jesus often. I I was so blessed last week. I I was hanging out at a baseball practice in Bigsby, Oklahoma, in all places. 
And then there was a man next to me and, and he was a little bit older and we began a conversation and I was there watching my son and he was there watching his grandson and we began talking and I found out that he's from Muskogee, Oklahoma. It's okay, hey, he's a, he's a rougher from Muskogee. And so we began talking about what it looks like to be an Okie from Muskogee. And uh, before you know it, I found out that this man was an incredible basketball player in the late 60s. And though he had never played football in his entire life, he had a tryout with the Dallas Cowboys because he was hanging out in a YMCA in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The scout came to watch someone else play basketball and the guy had like 35 points that day and was dunking left and right. And though he had never played football in high school, he got a trial with the Dallas Cowboys. How crazy is that? In the midst of this conversation, I'm sharing Jesus. And before you know it, I find out that he's known the Lord for 45 years and he began sharing Jesus with me. And we just simply met in the middle. And we had this incredible conversation for an hour and a half. I'd never met this man, I'd never seen him before in my life. But kind of find out he's a brother in Christ. And we were sharing stories about old athletic days from long ago. And Jesus was all over our conversation. And that all started because I was just intentional about sharing what Jesus was doing in my life and giving praise to the Lord for his blessing upon my life. You can do the same. You are a witness for Jesus. I think finally you can serve others. I mean, we are for the next eight to 10 days are going to have some of the coldest stretch in the history of the state of Oklahoma. And so, you know, as you go to Walmart or as you go to kind of your grocery store, why don't you buy an extra loaf of bread if you can find one or a gallon of milk and why don't you give it to a neighbor or a friend in need? Why don't you use this opportunity to, you know, grab out that shovel and, you know, to shovel off driveways for a neighbor or a friend in need or to use this opportunity to, to go through your phone, to look through your contact list and say, you know, who is it that needs a text of encouragement today? Who is it that, you know, may need some help today and reach out to them and use that as an opportunity to show and to share the love of Christ. You are a witness for Jesus. And as we step out by faith and continue to move forward, may we bless others in doing so. Jesus commands us that we are to reach every person in every culture. We are to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And as we take this day, Valentine's Day, and as we use it as an opportunity to, to show and share and tell others how much we love them, may we use it also as an opportunity to point to the love of Jesus Christ that has been graciously given to us in BA and beyond. We are good news people living in a bad news world. And we only have 321 days left in 2021 to tell of the love of Jesus Christ, to show and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You are a witness for Jesus. Now moving forward, I'm excited to tell you that we are committed to fulfilling the mission God has given us in two primary ways. One, we desire the Lord to, to bless our on-campus experience unlike any other. So we have three worship services here at 8.30, 9.45 and 11. We are also asking God to bless our online campus as well. We have four online campuses on Sunday morning, 8.30, 9.45, 11, and 12.30. We're going to continue to have dynamic ministries in preschool and kids and students and adults. But as we continue to move forward, it is the heart of our church. If people will not come to us, we will go to them. It is our heart to have Jesus on every phone in Oklahoma in the years to come. In Jesus in every home in Oklahoma in the years to come. And as we build a dynamic digital ministry, we desire to match content, the same content that you receive here on campus, we'd love to provide digitally so that you could share or that you could give to others off campus. We have through social media, the opportunities to reach thousands, if not tens of thousands of people with the message of Jesus Christ. And so please know one of the ways in which you can witness is just by taking the content that you see here and then multiplying it digitally throughout the entire world. So by liking and sharing and IMing or texting content from our website or from our Facebook pages or from Instagram, you have an opportunity to take and to share the gospel in BA 
and beyond. I think finally we also want to start content teams that have an opportunity to take the gifts God has given you. And as we study the Bible, begin to in our preschool and kids and student and adult ministries, find ways in which we can multiply content through social media, through our websites, through our phones, and have an opportunity to take the gospel, not just to the world, but to every single home in Oklahoma and on every single phone in Oklahoma by the glory of Christ. God in his goodness through COVID has already began to start an, an online community here. And as some of you have been watching us for months, I and mean, we are so excited and grateful. Please know that, that Jesus loves you and that we love you and have an opportunity to begin to partner with you to fulfill the mission God has given our church. To begin to work with you to take next steps for Jesus Christ. To begin to realize that you can right here from your phone, you can impact the world and our state, BA and beyond for Jesus Christ is one of the greatest privileges we have in building a digital ministry from First Baptist Church on Broken Arrow. You are a witness for Jesus. As we move forward, may we have this same pioneer spirit of William Carey, the father of modern missions, when he said, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. We cannot wait to move forward and to see Jesus move through us not just on campus at FBCBA, but online as well, as we reach tens of thousands of people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, you are my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And church, I can think of no better time than right now to step out on faith and to move forward with him to be everything that God has called you to be in Jesus Christ. You are a witness for Jesus. Now, as we conclude our time, I would love to give you an opportunity to give your life wholeheartedly to Jesus Christ. And so maybe someone invited you here, or you know what, you're stuck in your house and unable to travel and God in his goodness has led you right here at this time. Can I tell you that's not a mistake? Can I tell you that you've been prayed for? Can I tell you that God knew exactly that you would be right here to hear the message of Jesus Christ? And so if you're here and you desire a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you want to just say, I, Lord, I confess, that I've fallen short of your glory. I've built my own kingdom. I've made myself king. We all have, the Bible says, according to Romans 3. But the Bible also says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, that you can give your life completely to God through faith in Jesus Christ. You can say, Lord, I'm surrendering my life to you. You are king, you are in charge. I wanna build your kingdom. I wanna live for you. And you can give your life right now to Jesus Christ. In fact, if you do that, <laughs> we're so excited about that. You can text Jesus right now in the comment section. And we have a team member right now who would love to pray with you and we'd love to talk about what next steps look like in your relationship with Jesus Christ. You can also grab out your phone, text Jesus to 45776. And we would love to meet with you and to talk to you about what a relationship with God looks like. Church, for those of you who do know Christ, are you living a life of blessing? Are you being a witness? Are you building relationships? Are you listening first? Are you gonna eat with someone this week and talk about Jesus? Are you sharing Jesus often? Are you serving others? I can think of no better time than right now than to start. In fact, if you're ready to engage in the ministries of our church, why don't you grab out your phone, text the word STEP to 45776, and our Next Step team is ready to meet with you. If you would bow your head and close your eyes, I'd love to pray for you and over you as we conclude our time together. Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your scriptures. Thank you, Father, for technology and Lord, the blessing of technology that God just through one means we can take the gospel to the ends of the earth. That God, despite outward circumstances, that God, your gospel moves forward. And God, I pray right now for blessing upon your people and upon your church. God, I pray, Lord, that, that we would be fervent, that, Lord, we would be faithful to do what you called us to do, that we would move forward in 2021, that we would live every day by faith. Jesus, you say we are a witness for you. Empower us with your spirit. Allow us to share what you have done and what you are doing in our lives 
for your glory. God, we love you and we thank you for this time to meet. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Church, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. Stay warm, stay safe, stay on mission every single day. I love you. We'll see you next Sunday.